Hey, hey, we officially begin the last third of pre-algebra. Aren't you excited? I, I feel the excitement right there. Okay. And I'll go grab some more money from mom's purse and dad's one. You feel free to. No, you don't do that. Okay. All right. All right. Let's look at rate problems as. Okay. I don't, I don't like this again. This word problems is just not right. Let's change that to field trips. Rate field trips is proportioned field trips. Okay. So let's go and do an oldie first, okay? Again, in Saxon, you do something new, but you, what you do is you go, okay, let's make this uh, new thing look old, and then, oh yeah, we can do that. Okay, so let's do an oldie. 20 apples cost five bucks. How many apples can we buy for 60 bucks? Okay, well, again, what we do is we go, okay, 20 apples, you know what, forget that. I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna go re reduce it. 20 apples cost five dollars, that means four apples, if you reduce the fraction, cost one, dollar right let's just do that or of course you could also write it's one dollar to do four apples right so they ask and how many apples can we buy for sixty dollars and remember don't for, don't forget you just go all i do is i write sixty dollars okay sixty dollars don't even think about it okay all right you multiply by one of these which one are you going to multiply by <whistles> dollars on the bottom right so four apples uh, it's one dollar. Guess what happens to the dollar? Yoink! That's gone. 60 times 4 is 240, and that's how many apples you have. There you go. Okay. Now, another variation of the same problem would be 20 apples cost five dollars. How much would it cost to buy 48 apples? Instead of asking how much for 60 dollars, you're saying how much would it cost to buy 48 apples? Well, again, don't forget, let's just go back and go, how much to buy 48 apples? So, all right, so we're going to go like, well, you know what? I'm just write it up, write it over again. So we have, again, our ratio is four apples to one dollar, or we can write one dollar for four apples, okay? And they say, how much would it cost to buy 48 apples? Don't think, just go 48 apples. That's what you write, okay? And then you're going to go, okay, I'm choosing this one, all right? At one dollar, that'll be four apples, and then apples go away. 48 times one is on top, one times four is on bottom. 48 divided by 4 is $12, and that is your answer, okay? All right, that will bring us right into what we're going to do today, okay? We're going to solve this as a proportion. 20 apples cost $5. How many apples can we buy for $60? Gee, I, that sounds familiar. Okay, yeah, obviously, it's the one we just did. Okay, so 20 apples goes with $5, right? How many apples can we buy for $60? Well, if 20, 20 apples goes with $5, we're going to put this 60 over there to kind of match the dollars, right? How many apples? I don't know. Just use A or something. Okay. And then you just cross multiply, right? So 5 times A is 5A. 20 times 60. 2 times 6 is 12. Then we have 1, 2, 2 zeros. And then, you know, there we go. If we did the long division, we do two, that's how many apples we get right there. Okay. And don't forget, by the way, on these proportions, as long as you are consistent, you're okay. If somebody said to you, 20 apples cost $5, and how many apples can we buy for 60? You could go, oh, okay, two fractions here. 20 apples cost $5. You could go, how many apples? Go $60. So I don't know how many apples, but it costs $60. And it'd be the exact same thing. As long as you're consistent with where you put stuff and it matches over, or at least it matches here, you're fine. Do it whatever way you like. Okay, here's another one. Same thing. 20 apples cost $5. How much would it cost to buy 48 apples? So same thing. All right, so fraction equals fraction. These are proportions, okay? 20 apples cost $5. So the apples are here. I'll just, I'll just put the other one. Okay, uh, 20 apples cost $5. Yeah, right here, I'll just put the $5 on the bottom. How much would it cost? Which means we don't know how many dollars, D. 48 apples, boom, there you go. So 20 times D. And let's see here, five times 48 is 240. I can chop off zeros. Two times some number is 24. So the number, of course, is 12. $12, same answer we got just a minute ago. So the number is you can use either one of these you want. You can use whatever way you want to, you know, to, to solve these. Proportions, you can do the, uh, you know, the multiplying by the fraction and crossing out the dollar or the apple, whichever one. Okay. All right. 14 bags could be filled in three hours. How many hours would it take to fill 84 bags? Okay. Well, let's do proportion or the, you know, the other way. 
So 14 bags can be filled in three hours. How many hours would it take to fill 84 bags? Let's just do the, the proportion one first, okay? So four, 14 bags in three hours. So how many hours? So the hours is on the bottom. So we'll put the hours on the bottom. We don't know how many. Would it take to fill 84 bags? Yoink, there we go. And just cross multiply it, that's it. 14 times H is 14 H. 84 times three, if you did the arithmetic, it would be 252. And if you did the arithmetic here, it would be 18. There we go. And by the way, four, excuse me, 84 is six times 14. And if it's gonna take you three hours to do something, if it takes you, I mean, to do six times as many, it's just gonna be six times three or 18. There you go, okay? Now the other way to do this is the old way and just do the same thing. So 14 bags filled in three hours. So let's just write that as a proportion. 14 bags in three hours. And don't forget, the other way would be three hours to do 14 bags, right? Okay, they're asking, how many hours would it take to fill 84 bags? Don't forget, you just go, whatever you're given, write it. So you are given 84 bags. So you tell me, which one of these fractions are you gonna multiply this by to get the answer? The second one, right? Okay, so three hours for 14 bags. You're gonna go three hours and you're gonna go 14 bags, okay? And of course, you gone, okay? You're gonna go 84 times three on top, that's 252. One times 14 is this. The unit we have left is hours. Is that what we want? Uh, how many hours? Yeah, that's what we want. So 252 divided by 14 is the same thing it was just a minute ago, it's 18. So you can use either way. So again, on these, don't forget, you just make yourself two proportions and they go, how many hours it take to vote? 84, but you just go, okay, what they gave me 84 bags. I just gotta go, oh, I'm gonna write 84 bags right here. Then you figure out which one you wanna use, all right? Okay, let's try the practice problem on page 261. Pause and give it a whirl. All right, Jimmy could cap 60 bottles in seven hours. How long would it take him to cap? 420 bottles. All right, let's do the proportion away first, right? Fraction equals fraction. So 60 bottles in seven hours. You know what, let's just do it this way for the heck of it. 60 bottles over there with seven. Now, if you didn't do six, uh, you know, 60 over here, then seven over there, that's fine. As long as you did 60 over seven and the other one matched, you're fine. But I'm just gonna do it this way to show you what happens. 60 bottles matches with seven hours, okay? So how long would it take to cap 420 bottles? Well, the bottles are over here. What matches with this? Just put X, we don't know, there you go. Okay, 60 times X is 60X. 420 times seven is 2,940. And you could probably figure this out. You know, 60 goes into 420 seven times, seven times seven, anyway, you don't have to figure that out. But if you wanna do the long division, chop these zeros off to make it easier on yourself. So six into 29, uh, four. Uh, what's left over? Five. Six into 54, nine, there you go. All right. The other way to do this is the, you know, the fraction times the fraction method. So you go 60 bottles in seven hours. Okay, stop right there. 60 bottles in seven hours or seven hours to do 60 bottles. Okay, how long would it take to cap 420 bottles? You, you tell me, what do you write down without even thinking now? 420 bottles, right? Just go 420 bottles. And then you know you're gonna use this fraction right here, right? It's gonna be seven hours to do 60 bottles. Bottles cross out. 420 times seven is 2,940. That's hours is left as our unit, of course. And then the bottom, you know, if you wanna do one times 60 is 60. And of course the answer is gonna be the same exact thing, 49 hours. Look, you're, people like problem solvers. So these are, these are not exactly the kind of things you're gonna always be confronted in jobs or in groups or in some situation where you need the answer. But the more you practice these things and get a method down and get this method down, 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 and then you go, okay, I can apply this to different things. Man, that's the whole Saxon method. This will get you through a lot of stuff and you'll be, again, like you know, in some chemistry class or something like that, and you'll be sitting there going, oh, I know how to do this. I'm just going to do it. And everybody else will be going, ah, you know. So anyway, so it's like a way to like make friends and influence people. And um, oh, there's really one secret thing I was going to tell you about. It's really awesome that you can do because you know how to do this, which is 